Hello everybody, this is uh, my presentation for the e IRIS Easy ECP Workbench. The idea behind is uh, to give you a way to set up fast an environment where you run ECP and where you can test all the possible and impossible situations that the real environment may not offer to you. Especially the chance if you crash it or if you run into serious problems all you have to do you restart your container and you are fresh off and all this is rather fast since the setup of a ecp environment with two machines is sometimes a little bit a lot of effort that is now all packaged together into docker images that work together and that you may use for development of your environment. The first step is to download the whole package from GitHub. Uh, this is just as normal. The other point is that you need a special license that you get from WSC. It's a container license for multi-server use. This is a feature that allows you to run ECP, something that, not, that is not included in the normal community distribution license. So you have to prepare this and uh, we will start at the point where you have got your license. Okay. Now I have sent my mail to WRC and they sent me back an evaluation license, as you see here. Well, it is almost expired meanwhile. And uh, what I do next, I save it into my uh, environment that I have downloaded from GitHub. Okay, now I have changed to the console environment uh, moved into the downloaded project environment. You see GitHub Easy ECP Workbench. What you also see there is uh, our special license key that we got from WRC and The next is uh, to run Docker Compose, uh, as we do normally in these tests. Docker Compose build. And off it goes. In fact, we are just building one image at this point, but two containers. Uh, the one image, because it's iris, because the environment is totally identical, except for the fact that one is running as server and the other is running as CP client. And in order to have two separated ICP, TCP addresses, uh, I have uh, given them a name, which is a part of the compose file. Uh, one container is named server, the other, you won't guess it, it's client. And so we can run two containers in this environment and they can con talk to each other on the Docker internal network using node names container and sorry using node name server and uh, using node name client as if they were two machines.
So the download is still taking a little bit of time. There. And then the setup is running. Uh, what's happening there? Uh, during the build, it's not yet defined which container is the client, and which one is the server. So the specific setup for those is done at system start once the container is completed. And now we see building the server is actually on its way. It's just a normal process. And then we have then we have once we know which instance is server and which one is client, then we can do the special setup and also set up uh, the ECP connection, prepare data. So, okay, so the server is done. And now, based on the already cached images in Docker, also the client is built. There's a little bit of uh, time in between. So, you see, the build for the client was incredible fast because it uses exactly the already cached containers. So, Evenado Docker images, I see I have a client, I have a server, and I have my base image where all this comes from. So, as a next step, I start Docker Compose up and send it in background. And what you see here already, there is a client and a server container. I do a PS and, and see what the state is. Is the yeah, health they are up, are healthy, are still starting. So this means we cannot access it yet. But you see already here the IP addresses. They have this is the one of the differences that they project themselves to the local environment with different uh, IP ports, which is obvious. There's no problem with that. So, and uh, at that point, if I try to connect, it's probably a problem. So, we see how far we are going. Docker logs. Take a look. No, not the client. But the server, the server should be faster. Yeah, you see, this is, what you see here is, in fact, the complete uh, output that also goes to messages.log. The important point is here, ECP enabled, enabling your guns. So the server is ready and is ready to receive the connection from the client uh, we now do the same again for the client 
Okay, this looks good. Since what you see here, there's there are the classes that are loaded, and you see ECP connection failed. This was the first attempt, but the, all the installation is going on, and as the next try, next thing we try to connect to our server. Again, docker compose, there should be an exec somewhere. Exec. And we are in the user environment. Now I change to OpenSUS, run my do and database. And say okay, show me my databases. Okay. Uh, the command line environment is not so handy to show the effects and show the details. So I moved now to the system management portal. First we go to the server environment. Okay. So the important point is now to see if our ECB setup is working. Eventually do this a little bit smaller. Configuration, connectivity, ECB settings. And the first thing, ECP service is enabled. So ECP is running. The next interesting point is to see do we have an application server? And yes, here it is. On client side it's named data server. The client itself is here. And you see status is normal. Client IP, oh, it's there, I'm, but I'm not really interested. The client is named client. Well, was probably not so creative, but easy to understand. So, this thing is working. Uh, I go back and I take a look to the data. Go to System Explorer. Go for Globers. Yeah, sus is sus user and we see there is a bunch of globers you may easy guess by the name it's uh, the sample I imported from cache samples namespace the interesting point is how is this distributed to databases so I switch to database and see in names in database user there are no data there are no globers this is pure code and in Iris local data, there we have the code. There we have the, the, all the globers that we need to process it. How, what has happened? I go back to the configuration. Configuration, take a look to Oops, system configuration namespaces, and here you see, namespace user has his clovers in Iris local data. The routines, which means also the classes, are on database user. 
So data and code are separated. So far for, for the server side. And now I go to the client side. Um, uh, data client. Management portal, I go to client. Again, I have to log in. First, we take a look on connectivity, ECP settings, ECP service is enabled. The next is application. We are, we are the application server ourselves. That's not interesting. But what is about the data server? And there you see, there is a thing named data server has a host name server. This was imported from um, the Docker Compose file on port 1972. Status is normal, so it's up and running. And as we add the configuration, I also take a look to the namespaces. And here you see user has this data in ECP data. So, what database is this? And the routines in user, as we have seen also on the server side. So, another step back, I look into remote databases, and I see here is ECP data is in, on the server side directory Iris local data on server data server. So this is the database. So this is already configured. Uh, well, and uh, now we go to the Explorer. I switch immediately to database. Go to user. And there's almost nothing. There's just one clover from, from the setup environment and nothing else. But on ECP data at data server, with all the clovers, and now we take from here a look to our server side. All this information is not stored on client, but on the server side. Well, and finally, Clovis is a nice thing, but we're working on other things. Okay, I should go to a namespace, namespace user. Okay, in namespace, I see, of course, the Clovis, since they are part as if they were local. So, back to our normal view, SQL, I have my tables, I'm in namespace user, the server is client, you see it here, tables, are the well-known tables that we know from Cache, and I go to the person. Okay, uh, now I do a simple test uh, with my database, with my table, just a drag and drop, get everything in, set it to maximum uh, 20 lines. Give it some space for display. Oh, come on. So, and well, executed.
and here it is and yeah so you see it's uh, just normal you don't see any difference whether this is a client uh, or, or if the data are local no problem okay and now this is the point where you enter and enter your code and uh, try to, to experiment and send data between the both instances. Now I have reached the end of my presentation. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope it is useful for you to test the special conditions in an ECP environment and it would be great if you like it and i get your votes during the next contest or developer tools have a good time goodbye until the next time